Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy Thanksgiving Day to everybody. And I thought it would be most appropriate to give you some scriptures on why we should give thanks. A lot of people don't want to celebrate Thanksgiving anymore because they learned the truth that supposedly Thanksgiving was an awful day. For the Indians. Not that the Indians and the new settlers gave thanks together, which is what I always learned. So I don't care why it got started. Some president just declared it's going to be Thanksgiving Day, the fourth Thursday of every November from now on. Well, I'm glad he did. It gives families a chance to get together and have a great big meal. And give thanks to the Lord for all he's done for them this past year. And I think that we should give thanks every day. Don't you? When I pray, and I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I think this is how we should do it. I say thank you Lord for my apartment. Thank you for my little dog. Thank you for always giving me something to eat. Thank you for providing clothes and the money to buy them with. Thank you for my income. Thank you that I could afford to live in a place like this. It's so beautiful. My view is great and I thank him for that all the time that I got to move into this one. I just thank him for lots of things every time I pray. But I would like to go ahead and read 12 verses that talk about giving thanks. I found them on this channel. Let's see what it's called. The Gospel Herald Life. Now, Life, does anybody remember Life Magazine? They had a, a, I believe it was Life Magazine. It makes sense that it would have been. It's got the same font that I remember them having. And I could be wrong, but anyway, there's a great big picture here done by guess who? Yes, Norman Rockwell. It's called Freedom from Want. And it was done, it was painted by Norman Rockwell in 1943. Was that after the Great Depression? During the war, when things kicked up and people started, the women went back to work. The women went to work and earned the money. Anyway, they're showing a older woman putting a great big turkey on the table with children around. And another older woman over here. This is a young woman. Older man. An older man standing next to the woman serving the turkey. He was my favorite artist. Thank you, Lord, for helping me find this page. All right, it says, Thanksgiving is one of most one of the most beloved American holidays. For some people, unfortunately, it means Black Friday's the next day. <laughs> and we get a chance to rest up before we go shopping because we got to get up really, really early. <laughs> well, I saw a video yesterday that was talking about the news. It was like a news um, thing. Or maybe it was an advertisement. It might have been one of those video advertisements that you can't stop. And it was talking about how 10 years ago, people were still getting up. They showed some people in tents, waiting in line at stores to be the first ones in the door. And unfortunately, some people got trampled to death on Black Friday. That's the truth. When my children were little, and uh, was it called Precious Moments? No, not Precious Moments. It was those dolls that were later found out to be demonic. Um, uh, 
can't remember now. It was so long ago. But anyway, I made my children from a pattern you could buy one of their own. Braided the hair. They were nice looking. I kept them for them. They didn't want them until I had a housekeeper here when I moved here. And I really thought Jesus was coming that year. I really did. I was giving stuff away and I gave those dolls to a housekeeper. And she would listen to me talk about that stuff now and then. But I kept her from her work so I tried not to do it too much. But anyway, let's move on. Thanksgiving is one of the most beloved American holidays. Evoking images of family, turkey, football, and pumpkin pie. However, to Christians, Thanksgiving has a far greater meaning. I'm having a harder time reading than ever. And I don't understand why. Doesn't vision problems kind of go gradual? Not like over a year or so? Thanksgiving has a far greater meaning. It is a... It is... It should be a special day. Set aside to reflect and give thanks to God for all the blessings he has bestowed on his people. Here are 12 great Bible verses to remind you of the true reason for thanksgiving as you celebrate the wonderful holiday with your loved ones. And I want to remind everybody to give thanks unto the Lord every day. Even if it's, you know, a lot of times I'll be sitting here having coffee with him in the morning. And I'll go, thank you for this cup of coffee, Lord. It sure is good. You see, I'm thanking him just for my cup of coffee. Or thank you, Lord. It's such a beautiful day out this morning. Wow, it's gorgeous out there. Thank you for my view. Whatever you have, thank him for it, okay? I'll move on. First Chronicles 16.34 says, Give thanks, oh give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. Psalm 100 verse 4 Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. You know, it doesn't tell it, but I think this is probably King James Version. It's by Leah Marianne Clett. And in parentheses it says, News at gospelherald.com okay so it's the gospel herald and underneath that it says life bigger in bigger words so uh, but the title is Thanksgiving Bible Verses 12 Favorite Scriptures for Christians to Remember okay I'll continue I wanted to see if it said King James Version or what. It does not tell. May at the end. Um, where was I? First Chronicles 16.34 Okay, I started with that one. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Psalm 107. This is verses 29 through 32. He caused the storm to be still. So that the waves of the sea 
were hushed. Then they were glad because they were quiet. So he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. Let them extol him also in the congregation of the people and praise him at the seat of the elders. You know, that reminds me, praise him at the seat of the elders. When we get to heaven, there's 24 chairs around the throne of God where Jesus and Father sit. And I'm sure it's the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. Pretty sure Judas is not there. It'd be the other one that they voted in. Remember, it had to be someone that followed Jesus the whole time they did. That they felt for sure was as close to the Lord as they were. And they came up with two names. And they prayed and then cast lots. And I honestly don't remember the name of the guy it fell on, but he became the 12th apostle. So he'll be the one, one sitting in the seat of Judas. How sad. Jeremiah 33.11 Give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. And that's the truth. God will love you forever. Even if you quit loving him. Or had quit loving him. You can be sure if you ask for forgiveness. He still loves you and will give it. Let the, This is Ephesians 5.4. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Can you imagine that? Being at work with a bunch of secular people, and they're telling crude jokes, out of, <laughs> which are out of place. I would think that would be like more like at church. <laughs> but but let, what if, what if you were at work and, and, and y'all were standing around having break and they're telling crude jokes or something filthy and all of a sudden you said, let us give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let's forget all this filthy talk. It's out of place. Talk like that at home if you want. But I want to give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. He's provided for us a job which gives us money to, to take care of our families and you just start going on and on about why you should give thanks to the Lord. <laughs> See how many of them walk away. You should try it sometime. 2 Corinthians 9.11 You will be enriched but you better do it soon because those who are first fruiters, first fruits raptured people, those ready, those who are ready and living holy and repenting every night and forgiving people that hurt you, uh, those that are ready, loving God most, loving others as their self, which by the way, I saw something yesterday that reminded us, love other people as you love yourself. So it is God's will for you to sometimes say no because you have to take care of yourself too. Okay? All right. 2 Corinthians 9 11. 
You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Yes, it will. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Now, you may not be enriched in that, oh, you get the best job, so you get the best income, and therefore you can buy your family the best house and put the best meals on the table. It may not mean that for you. But he will provide in such a way that will be generous for your situation. And sometimes there are ups and sometimes there are downs. So, we have to praise Him through the down times as well as the up times and let Him know we love Him no matter what. No matter how bad things seem, haven't a lot of people been there? Your money is not there. It's just not there, especially now since so many people are out of work because of the COVID. They just don't have it to give or even to buy for themselves. But give thanks anyway for what you do have. Moving on. Okay, let's see. Colossians 4 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 3 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. See, you can tell how these are for every day. They're sure not for just one day of the year. 1 Timothy 4, 4-5. through 5. You could write down your favorite. And put it on your bathroom mirror. And say it every day. Or wherever you have prayer with God. Put it in your Bible. And every if you read the Bible, like say you, you pick, uh, say you started with Matthew and you're up to uh, Ephesians. And every day you move your bookmark to the wherever you ended. You could put it with your bookmark. So you'll see it every day. That's just a suggestion. All right. 1 Timothy 4, 4 through 5. For everything created by God is good. And I love this one. Listen closely. For everything created by God is good. And nothing is to be rejected. If it is received with gratitude, for it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. Can anyone think of any examples of this? What if someone brought you a live bunny rabbit for Easter? Because they don't know any better. And they thought it would make you happy. Now you might think, I don't want nothing to do with rabbits on Easter. Would you accept it if they had brought it two weeks later? Or a month later? Everything created by God is good. And nothing is to be rejected. If it is received with gratitude... For it is sanctified by means of the word of God in prayer. Now, you may not want a rabbit, 
But they are really cute animals. As long as you don't put them with another one of the opposite sex, you're all right with it. If it becomes too much to care for, you ask the person who gave it to you and say, I tried. I love this rabbit, but it's too much for me to care for. Would you like to have it back or should I sell it in the paper? You know, whatever. So they'll know you're giving it away or selling it. That's just my... I don't know why that came up. I could have thought of something else. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Revelation eleven seventeen. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Revelation 7.12 Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. That is, I believe that is when the multitude too large to number appears in heaven. I can't look it up. Blue Letter Bible. Let's see if it's still messed up. Whoops. That was the weather. Oh, it's fixed. Yay. Revelation 7, 12. <clears throat> okay. 11, 10, 9. All right, it starts with Revelation 7, 9. After this, I be these are the left behind people now that we, the first fruiters, those who go outside of time or get raptured first, come back down and we help these people not take the mark. We help them get truly saved, heart healed and delivered of demons and whatever they need. We might be putting them back together again, literally. All right. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. That means a whole lot of people. Of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues. We're talking Buddhists, and Muslims, and, and, uh, Oh, those little pygmies. They're all kind of people. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with their white robes and palms in their hands. I think it's the pygmies that the Christians have not been able to reach. I could be wrong, but there is a tribe somewhere that kills anyone trying to get near them because they've had people come and just make them sick uh, with their, their illnesses because they've never been exposed and they thought it was on purpose and maybe it was and maybe it wasn't. But anyway, they just haven't been able to reach them and the word says that um, the end will not come until all nations have been preached 
to, not the word of God published, as some preach out of a Bible that says published. It's not published, it's preached to. All right. And if we show up and they try throwing poisonous darts at us and they don't do any harm, they're going to know, <gasps> they're going to be scared and they're going to listen and we're going to be able to talk in their language. Isn't that going to be amazing? It's the only way. God knew it. He knows it and he knew it before. So anyway, these people cried out with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels round stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. Now notice it says the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and four beasts and fell before the throne. I don't think the multitude did. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, this is verse 13, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Like, I don't know. You know. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Let me repeat that. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. So there is a night. Or perhaps that was used to give us understanding that there would be a continuous process of them coming in and, you know, like taking turns. Because if it's a multitude too large to number, it doesn't make much sense that all of them are serving him day and night. I think I need water. But we'll see. Won't we? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. So, dwell among them. So, he, Jesus is going to get off the throne and he's going to be walking among them. I mean, he'll be so happy that they turned their lives over to him. And it'll be such a great number. I'm hoping like five billion. We'll see. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. See, they're hungry and thirsty. They're going through the famine. We won't be going through a famine, okay? This is the multitude too large to number. They're going through a famine. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. They've had a hard time finding clean water or making it. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb, so they've been hot. They've been hot. So they last at least through next summer. Of course, some people are having summer now, right? 
the bottom half of the other side of the world? I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'll have to look on the map. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So they've been crying, crying out to the Lord, Lord, please help us. Please make this stop. Please help us find food. And one day, they'll all be taken up in the second rapture. And then, the wrath of God begins. This is just at the end of the seals. Okay, so see, because if you go to 8, listen, Revelation 8, 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, so see, this is just now getting to the seventh seal. There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. So, You've got all these people disappearing, which probably surprised even the Antichrist. So there was silence in heaven. I don't know how there could be any silence in heaven. People will be rejoicing. Maybe they'll be laying on their faces, crying and just praising him, just quietly praising him, and the Lord allows it to go the space of half an hour, which is that in heaven's half an hour or earthly half an hour? Could be earthly. We don't know. The timing in heaven will be different, but the point I wanted to make was that was the sixth seal when they all went up. And now it's the seventh seal where there's silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. I think somebody did a study on that, talking about, um, oops. Oh, no, Mr. Bill. Well, that was the last one. I'm pretty sure. I'd made it disappear, and it, I don't know how to... How to make it come back. Google. Wait here. Scriptures for giving thanks. Ah, here it is. I want to make sure that was the last one. Yes. Revelation 7.12. Yes, that was the last one. So I, ha I pray that that blessed you. And that it will help you to remember to give thanks to our Almighty God. Whenever you pray, thank Him for something, even if it's a really bad day. Alright, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.